It's Wednesday, February 19, and time for your Bobby Today Morning News Update. It's day two of the 31st CARICOM Intercessional Summit, and leaders will be locked behind closed doors discussing pressing issues confronting the region. Among the top agenda items are health issues, including the new coronavirus or COVID-19, the CARICOM single market and economy, economic matters, security and border issues, and regional travel. At yesterday's opening held at the Lloyd's King Sandiford Centre, CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister Mia Motley called for the niggling issue of regional transportation to be resolved. We have recognized that we need to be able to resolve the issue of transport, and that is a work in progress. While all of the members of the Conference of Heads are not shareholders in LIAP, it is fair that it is necessary for me to report that LIAP now has a new board with a renewed mandate to be able to ensure that regional affordable transportation is made available to Caribbean people. To run a country without transport is to condemn that country. Similarly, to run a community without affordable transport is to condemn that community. Following that call, Saint Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, who has responsibility for regional transportation, told Barbados today his government was considering the feasibility of offering rebates or concessions to regular regional travelers. We have a lot of agricultural traders who come to Trinidad, who come to Barbados and who go to Trinidad selling a range of agricultural produce do it in Grenada too. They, they fly down on Liat and they send their commodities on boat. The question we're looking at is whether on a monthly basis we can't give them rebate. They pay it, the taxes but on a monthly basis give them the rebate on the taxes which they pay, the registered, the registered traders. Mm -hmm. So that's one way in which you can help some people who are using it frequent, using the, the the planes frequently to do trade. Maybe if you begin with that, maybe you can give exemptions. You can give the rebates to some other groups. Maybe journalists who are traveling if you're traveling frequently, and so on and so forth. On the issue of taxes on regional travel, Dr. Gonzalez said governments must find the right balance. But he said Liat's new board, led by former Barbados Prime Minister Owen Arthur, now had a strategic plan for the regional carrier. There are many, many elements, but they're seeking to prioritize these various elements and to look at them. One of the issues clearly is taxes, and a lot has been written on it, a lot has been analyzed. But some of the difficulties you have is this, yeah, are, are these. The people, you're using the airports, you want better airports. Somebody has to pay for them. Yeah? Should the ordinary man who walks the street of Bridgetown, who doesn't travel, should his taxes pay for it or you and I who use the airport? You see, these, these, it, it's, it's, it's not an easy question. As always with these matters, we have to try and do a balance. Clearly, it is too expensive to travel in the region, and part of it has to do with taxes. Also speaking on the sidelines of that meeting was Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joyce St. John. She expressed satisfaction with the level of preparedness being taken in Barbados and the rest of the region in relation to the coronavirus or COVID-19. Dr. St. John assured that there were no confirmed cases in the Caribbean and CAFRA will continue to do its part. What we are doing now is working on Caribbeanizing um, treatment um, protocol. Now that we feel a little happier about the border control measures, uh, in terms of that treatment protocol, CARFA will be convening a group of experts, uh, technical experts, who will guide. And we're taking members of our member states 
so we can have a practical carbonized version of the generic protocols that would have been put out by WHO. Dr. St. John dismissed any notion that measures being implemented by Caribbean states were too stringent. Not so far it hasn't been anything to do with COVID-19, but you've seen some of these scenarios around the world uh, with cruise ships that have had inordinate levels of the same COVID-19. When you're in a scenario like that, an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But yes, yeah, some people still think that it is extreme, but it is made on the basis of science. In other news, police and prison authorities have launched separate investigations into alleged physical assaults on wardens by some inmates at Dodds Prison. Word of this from Home Affairs Minister Edmund Hinkson, who also disclosed that at least one of those prisoners had been charged by police. He was responding to a story published by Barbados Today, in which Treasurer of the Prison Officers Association of Barbados, Nigel Hall, revealed that nearly half a dozen officers had been assaulted at that institution. When contacted last week, Minister Hinkson said he knew nothing about the attacks, but now says he he was aware of only one reported assault. Prior to the article, I had knowledge of only one incident where a prison officer sustained an injury within the last year during the course of his employment. That incident, which is referred to in the article, was drawn to my attention in October last year. It is correct to say that the officer who was allegedly injured in January last year was attempting to intervene in a physical altercation between two prisoners now requires a medical procedure to rectify damage which resulted to his right leg. Minister Hingson also denied that he was informed about the situation at a January 8th meeting. Since the publication of the article, I have also requested information on other instances referred to in the article. This information reveals that the Royal Barbados Police Force is investigating two of the incidents and has charged an inmate in connection with one. The inmate in connection with one other incident has been dealt with by the superintendent as he is authorized to do. Meanwhile, the other matters are also being investigated at the level of the superintendent. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Root Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume revelers, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. Regionally, CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister Mia Motley said she's eager to see a new funding model for the CARICOM Development Fund. The CDF, which became operational in August 2009, was established to provide financial or technical assistance to so-called disadvantaged countries and sectors within the regional bloc. Addressing yesterday's opening of the 31st CARICOM Intercessional Summit, Motley suggested that the ability of the fund to be maintained at a certain level was at risk. With the best will in the world, this fund cannot be sustained purely from the contributions of the more developed countries as they are known in the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. It is against this background that I hope that this meeting will reflect and resolve on the best way to ensure that the CARICOM Development Fund is capable of better accessing funds, both regionally and internationally, to ensure that those who may have been affected or been disadvantaged as a result of our commitment to come together can benefit by being able to have access to concessional funding that they would not otherwise have access to. And finally, U.S. President Donald Trump has commuted the prison sentence of Rod Blagojevich, the former Illinois governor, convicted of trying to sell former President Barack Obama's vacated U.S. Senate seat. 
In 2009, Blagojevich was impeached and removed from office by state lawmakers after prosecutors said he had tried to sell or trade the U.S. Senate seat that former President Barack Obama vacated after winning the 2008 presidential election. While he awaited trial in 2010, the former governor was a contestant on Trump's Celebrity Apprentice TV show. Trump, who was at Joint Base Andrews on his way to campaign trips on the West Coast, said the former governor seemed like a nice guy. Uh, I don't know him very well. I met him a couple of times. He was on for a short while on The Apprentice years ago. Uh, seemed like a very nice person. Blagojevich was but one in a slew of individuals who had their sentences commuted or were pardoned by the commander-in-chief on Tuesday. Many were white-collar criminals convicted of corruption. That's news, but for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.